Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 27th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. There are a couple of things you just shouldn't expose on the internet. There's maybe, for example, your networked storage devices like your QNAP, Synology, and the like, your homemade WordPress websites, and of course, any kind of system that is used to manage your server, like, for example, the HP integrated lights out management interface or ILO, which is very similar uh, to Dell's uh, DRAC uh, system. And of course, that's another thing that you shouldn't expose. So Jan took a look at how many of these systems are actually exposed and uh, using a couple different techniques, like for example, searching on uh, Google as well as on Shodan, he found about 20,000 servers exposed to the internet. This is rather unfortunate because these are servers that are usually sold to more professional environments. These are not home user systems. And over the years, there have been a number of critical vulnerabilities that essentially allow the complete takeover of these servers without any credentials. So please, please double check that any system like this, and like I said, it's not just restricted uh, to HP's implementation, Dell and others, uh, any kind of IPMI interface and such uh, should be in the same category, should never be exposed to the public internet. And yes, this isn't new. And actually, someone on Twitter asked whether or not this changed due to the pandemic. And Jan did sort of a quick historic search and didn't really find a significant change in the number of exposed devices pre versus post pandemic. And Apple today did its usual, well, patch everything a day. A watch OS is now 8.4. iOS and iPad OS is 15.3. Same for TV OS. For Mac OS Monterey, we now have 12.2. And for Mac OS Big Sur, we have 11.6.3. There are also a specific security update for Catalina. And then we do also have a standalone update for Safari that applies to Mac OS, Big Sur, and Catalina. Overall, there are only about a dozen different vulnerabilities that are being addressed across the different operating systems, give or take a few, depending on uh, the operating system. But uh, some of these vulnerabilities are not to be taken lightly. There's, for example, a memory corruption vulnerability in IO mobile frame buffer that does allow arbitrary code execution and that apparently has already been exploited. There is also the index DB issue in Safari that has been disclosed a couple of weeks ago. And then finally, an interesting vulnerability that allows access to the webcam without any authorization. Now, you have to click on a couple of dialogues in order to make this work, but still not that terribly difficult to exploit. And we also have a blog post with plenty of details regarding this vulnerability. So I do recommend that you do apply this update this week. However, there is one caveat here. Dropbox did send a message to its customers, and you may have received that email as well, that in macOS 12.2, that's this latest update, that was released today. Dropbox doesn't quite work as before. If you do have a document that's stored within Dropbox, so there is no local copy of it, then you first have to double click it before you can actually uh, open it in other applications. This may actually uh, be a little bit related uh, to uh, this uh, webcam access uh, bug here, because that was somehow related uh, to some of the iCloud uh, sync issues. So slight inconvenience for Dropbox users, definitely be aware of that, uh, but uh, you definitely should try to update. And Let's Encrypt uh, updated how it is uh, doing its uh, certificate uh, verification if you're using the TLS ALPN01 uh, uh, challenge uh, type. Now, according uh, to Let's Encrypt, only about a percent or so of their users are using that challenge type, but due to some bugs that they had in that uh, verification type, they have to revoke certificates that were issued using this challenge type. 
If you are affected, you should have received an email with uh, details. Now, a little bit of problem here is if you just run CertBot Renew, you may not see a problem because uh, CertBot is just looking at the expiration date. And of course, the expiration date is fine. It's uh, the OCS P that it will be used in order uh, to revoke those certificates. You may want to double check in a few days uh, with, uh, for example, SL Labs or so if you see any certificate problems. And at that point, uh, you could just uh, force renew uh, those certificates. But again, the email from Let's Encrypt should have included also additional uh, details. Just a simple renew may not work because that TLS ALPN 01 challenge type has temporarily been disabled. Well, that's it for today. And by the way, I'm experimenting a little bit with uh, different ways to display some of the logs that you're submitting uh, to the Storm Center website. Just uh, made some small updates uh, to uh, the firewall log review page. So uh, if you are sending logs, uh, take a look. And if you have any suggestions how to sort of improve it, uh, let me know. If you're not submitting logs, well, uh, time to get started. Thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.